Hey everybody, Sadler here at the Robot in Three Days competition, checking out FAM, the, the University of Michigan team, and uh, checking out the robot they created here for Robot in Three Days. Now teams, keep in mind, this is only created in just a few days, so there's a lot of things that you can take and apply towards your team as you're looking at getting ready for the competition season. So we're we'll gonna be talking more about this robot, and what goes into it all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Get ready to celebrate your rapid react build season with premiere night on Saturday, February 26 at 6 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. This year, no matter where you are in creating your robot, submit a 90 second or less video celebrating your build season to Premiere Night. Submissions are due by the end of Thursday, February 24th, and you can get more details on any fun social channel or at firstupdatesnow.com forward slash Premiere 22. All right, Don, we're gonna start out with your intake on your robot here. Talk to us a little bit more about some of the concept behind it and maybe what teams can learn uh, from your intake as well. For sure. Um, so yeah, we went for an over the bumper uh, style intake with a drop down. Um, so you can see that here, Christian, if you want to go and hit that. Um, so we just spin the wheel and then the Velcro detaches. Um, and then these ropes right here um, are what keep it from going too far down. Um, and so the kind of nice thing about this setup um, is that we can use the bumper as sort of a catch uh, to, uh, to move the balls in. Um, and then these green compliant wheels here are nice and squishy so that we can have a little bit of compression that helps uh, kind of propel the ball forward into the rest of our robot. So talk to me about the, uh, the stealth wheels you have on there with the zip ties as well. Yeah, um, so when we were kind of prototyping this, we noticed um, that a lot of the problems getting the ball in, um, where the ball would kind of get stuck in this area right here. Um, so yeah, so these zip ties are designed to uh, kind of push the ball up into it. Um, so if we oh, get another one going in there, so it'll go like that. The zip ties kind of help push it up um, into the robot um, more than the wheels kind of do. So what would your advice be to the teams, you know, as they, they start to assemble their intakes, and a lot of them already have plans already, obviously, as we're going into week five recording this, but like, what is something maybe you would have given as advice to teams? Yeah, um, I would say maybe spend uh, the, the extra time that you have on kind of tuning the distances here. I think uh, if, if we kind of fine tune the distances that the, these wheels sat from the ground and from the bumper, um, it would kind of negate having to use all these zip ties and things that make it look not as pretty, so. Well, I want to go into this, this uh, gate system that you have here on your robot as well, too, and talk a little about uh, the servos that go into it. Yeah. Um, so these servos prevent the ball from going into our shooter um, when we're not ready. Um, so before we release the gate, these uh, wheels kind of spin up. And Pierre, we'll talk more about the shooter in a second. Um, but they release the ball, and then the gravity from the, the ramp here being tilted back um, kind of let, uh, let the ball go into the shooter. So Kirsten, you want to hit it again? So like that. Perfect. Well, let's hop into your shooter. Talk to me a little bit more about what went into it. I'd love to hear more about your wheel selection as well, too, for your flywheel. Yeah, so for the flywheels, we basically just looked at what we had on hand and tried to use the largest, heaviest wheels we could to have the most like uh, rotational inertia um, to transfer to the ball. And we just ended up with these six inch anti mark chassis wheels, um, just because that's what we had on hand. Ideally, we would probably try to manufacture like a disc out of metal that would be balanced and we put on the side to keep that rotation up so we could shoot two in a row, but we just didn't have that on hand. The time wasn't there. Kiro, talk to me a little about uh, your exit uh, angle and the velocity behind it as well too. Yeah, so we actually prototyped a couple of angles and speeds and compression between the, the two wheels here. So the angle I think we went with is around six degrees, but we found that we actually have a lot of play with how far and high the ball goes, depending on the relative velocity of each of these two wheels. What actually mattered a lot more than the angle was the compression between these two. So originally we had half an inch squeezing the ball um, and we weren't getting the results we wanted. And then we switched it to one and a half inches actually. And it uh, increased our distance by threefold. Well, wrap us up on this robot talking about your uh, climbing mechanism and what you learned from that. Yeah, so our climbing mechanism is just like a, a simple PVC pipe in a one-by-one -one aluminum tube. Um, 
we have one motor that winches the PVC pipe up and then we'll hook on to the bar and then we have another motor attached to a winch that will spool up this rope and lift the uh, robot up. Um, we have issues with this kind of getting jammed and there's some commercial components that uh, this mimics. Um, yeah, so here you can see the, the pipe not really going back down. Uh, ideally, you'd probably have this strung both in the up and down direction. So when you run it in reverse, it pulls itself back down instead of being gravity or bungee fed. Well, wrap me up on here talking about uh, you've been able to play a couple matches now, Rapid React. What are your first impressions of Rapid React and how the game's going to play out? The game gets really congested really fast. These balls are quite large and there's quite a few of them on the floor at a time. So it's not that uncommon for a robot and a couple balls to block certain large parts of the field. Um, so you really have to be able to deal with interacting with the game pieces a lot, actually. Well, University of Michigan, thanks a lot for telling us about your robot and your experience here at Rapid React, and can't wait to see future robots you create in the future years. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.